Simply saying the words beef filet is enough to strike fear into many a cook, pricey and easy to overcook. So today we'll employ the tried and true reverse sear method, which will ensure our steaks are cooked perfectly while giving us just enough time to bring together the other elements of this elegant dish. Cream corn, gremolata, and a balsamic beurre noir. Sounds like a mouthful, and uh, it is a very tasty one. Whenever we do videos that have a few different components, I like to cook them in the order that I think you should do them at home. So we're going to start with our fillets, get them onto a wire rack, give them a nice seasoning with salt, and we're going to put them in a 250 degree oven until they are cooked through to 130 degrees for medium rare. It's going to take about 45 to 55 minutes for those steaks, so just enough time to prep the rest of our elements. We're going to start by dicing three large cloves of garlic then tearing off a handful of parsley leaves and small stems, and finally zesting one large lemon. Once we've got these components on our board, we're going to bring them all together and chop them to make a condiment called gremolata. It's very commonly served with asobuco, but I love the way the herbal citrus notes pair with the beefy unctuous tenderloin. So just run your knife through that until it is a fine, dice. You can certainly do this in a food processor or a mortar and pestle, but if you've got good knife skills in a couple minutes, I think this is the easiest way to go about it. Set that aside and we'll turn our attention to our corn. I'm using two 10 ounce bags of frozen corn because I couldn't find good corn on the cob, but if you can find good corn on the cob, you'll need about two and a half cups worth. Go ahead and microwave that to thaw it out. Take two tablespoons of flour and put them into a large bowl or measuring cup. Add one tablespoon of butter or maybe two if you're feeling zesty, to a skillet over medium heat. One cup of milk goes into the cup with the flour, followed by one cup of heavy cream, or you could just use two cups of half and half, of course. And go ahead and whisk that thoroughly to get that flour all incorporated into the dairy. Once your butter is nicely melted, go ahead and add in your defrosted corn and cook that stirring occasionally for four to five minutes until it is soft and cooked through. We'll of course want to give it a nice seasoning with some freshly cracked pepper, a nice pinch of salt. And after it's been cooking for a few minutes, go ahead and add in a couple of green onions that have been finely diced. Stir that in. And I like a little pop from some chili flake here. This is totally optional. Once you've got that stirred in, go ahead and add in your two cups of dairy and the flour and bring this up to a simmer. That flour is effectively going to create a roux with that heavy cream. And once this does come up to a simmer, it is going to get lovely, luscious, and thick. Simmer that out for a minute or two, and then set it aside to keep it warm. It'll definitely tighten up when it cools off just a little bit. Now, we're going to make a balsamic butter sauce called a beurre noir, which begins with a half tablespoon of butter going into a skillet, followed by one crushed clove of garlic. Just barely start to toast that garlic for about 30 seconds at which point we're gonna add in roughly one third cup of good quality balsamic vinegar. Continue to cook this out over medium heat, for four to five minutes, or until it has roughly reduced by half. We don't want it to be syrupy, but just beginning to get more viscous. At this point, we need to add something to help butter emulsify into this sauce, so we're gonna do that with about a teaspoon of tomato paste. Stir that into the balsamic reduction, and at this point, we can kill the heat and we're going to emulsify in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. Give it a little pinch of salt for seasoning, of course, and then go ahead and add in that butter one tablespoon at a time and swirl away. Once that first one is mostly melted in there, go ahead and add the second one and just twirl it around in the pan until it is fully emulsified and dissolved into the balsamic sauce. You want to serve this pretty quickly, so let's grab our steaks and get them seared. Take another skillet, I hope you've got a few of them handy. Put it over high heat this time, we really want to crank it. There's our steaks, they're totally cooked through to 130, but they don't look that great, so let's fix that now. Go ahead and make sure they are totally dry on the surface, any moisture here is going to prevent a nice golden brown crust. Get a couple tablespoons of olive oil down into that skillet, make sure it is smoking hot, and then add in your steaks. You can see that liquid there popping in the hot oil. You only need to give them about 60 to 90 seconds on each side. Just get a nice little crust on there and we can begin to serve. It's 
Since these steaks have cooked very slowly, we really don't have to worry about letting them rest, but we do want to worry about getting them properly seasoned, so I'm going down over top with a little fresh cracked pepper. To plate, we'll put down a couple of generous spoonfuls of our cream corn. You can see how it's tightened up there. Go ahead and spread that out, make a nice bed. I have a few asparagus that I roasted off in the oven. They're not included in the dish guide down below, but um, they make a nice little vegetal addition all the same. Now, check out this steak. Perfectly blushing from edge to edge. I like to serve it sliced, but you could also serve it whole. Go ahead and put it on top of your cream corn and asparagus. Fan it out just a little bit. Hit it with a little final seasoning. A little fresh sprinkle of sea salt never hurt anyone. Now we're going to top it with our gremolata. That hot steaming meat is going to perfume those herbs just beautifully. And then the pièce de résistance, that balsamic butter sauce right over the top to tie the whole dish together. Got to give it a little garnish. I got to say, it takes a few steps, but it's actually a relatively easy dish to bring together. It took me just a little less than an hour, and you know, I'm moving cameras and plates and things around, so I definitely recommend that you give this a try sometime soon when you want to impress a friend or loved one. That steak is perfectly cooked. You get sweetness and tanginess from the balsamic, those fresh herbal notes from the lemon zest, the garlic, the parsley, and that cream corn is super rich, decadent. Nice sweetness from that corn, a little hit of heat from that red pepper flake we put in there. This is definitely a delightful dish. I hope you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching. Now, go make something delicious.